Okay. Could you please, um, Mary, again, read the uh, legal notice for us? I'm sorry. Legal notice, Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Waitley. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Thursday, April 25th, 2024 at 6 40 p.m. Jesse Hassinger and Amy Francis have applied for a special permit to continue building and receive a certificate of occupancy for a two-family home on premises located at 27 Masterson Road and owned by Livett, Lovett, and Crumberg, colon, Dory Urch Mead and Jesse Hassinger of that address. The hearing will take place virtually via Zoom. The rules of decorum for a public hearing remain in effect and the chairperson will seek comments from the public when appropriate to do so. Application for the special permit is to be considered under the provisions of the Waitley Zoning Bylaws as provided by Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A. This notice is also published electronically on www.recorder.com slash public dash notices and www.masspublicnotices.org. Then follow the meeting ID, the passcode, the computer link, and the telephone numbers for joining the meeting. The uh, notice is signed Deborah Carney Chair, Zoning Board of Appeals, and this ran in the Greenfield Recorder on April 11th and 18th and was mailed to interested parties. Okay, April 11th and 18th. Thank you. Amy, did you notice any errors or omissions? Okay, Amy, you're oh. you're muted. Okay. Yeah. Um I I'm so sorry to bring this up and this is why I was hoping for Roger to be here from a legal uh, standpoint. But has has your mother died? She has. My mother um my mother died on January 14th. Um the but the property ownership hasn't changed yeah it's been too soon for her name to not to no longer be on the deed oh okay well first um, our, and, our condolences thank second you. i'm i i am not clear about that i don't know if we need to amend the hearing and and if you'll bear with me i'm just going to see um uh i'm just trying to see if there's another way i can reach uh, Roger. The only the only thing I can I mean I can tell you what I know about ownership of the property. Okay. Um. So my mother, um, my mother set up estate planning uh, last year, to which I became the executor of her estate while she was still living. Um. All of her estate, including the home at 27 Masterson is owned by Livett, Lovett, and Crumberg. Um, okay. So and that's the name of the estate? That's the name of the LLC that owns the, that's the name of the business that owns the property. Okay. Um, the, the deed, the actual deed to the property does have her name and does have my husband's name, Jesse Hassinger. Okay. Um, given that she's passed and that um, I live in Kroberg and that my husband's name is on the deed, there's no, so um, for instance, we don't need to go to probate court. Like okay. all of the legal documents, which I, <laughs> it's going to be a lot, but I can, I can send you all of the legal documents that we have from the estate lawyers? No, I'm I'm sure I, I'm sure no. that's not necessary. I just I'm just putting this into the record. This is um, sure. as I said, this is why I was hoping that uh, because Roger is an attorney that he might have a very quick answer. But um, I did just want to ask that. Um, secondly, is there you you know we're we're familiar with the history of this project and we certainly got all the documents that you sent. Um, before we take a look at maybe the most um, important one, which is the plot plan, is there anything that you wanted to say in terms of um, uh, presenting the project to us now? 
I think I'd prefer to wait until there are questions. Okay. Okay. That well, feels then... a little less confusing. Sure. So the first, the first thing that, um, and then uh, um, Kristen, I think, uh, in the absence of Roger, you're going to be voting on this, and Bob as well, Bob Smith and Kristen Vivon. Um, so the first, so you are now coming before the board looking for a two-family, a special permit for a two-family home, correct? Um, maybe this is where. That's what your application is says. But yeah. It is what the application says. Um, uh, at the end of the day, it it doesn't really matter to us what what it's called. Um, but yeah, that is what the building inspector would like to see. Okay, no, I that's really crucial. Because if the building inspector denied you an occupancy permit, which the documentation shows that um, they did, and told you to come before us to a special for a special permit for a two family, that's what we that's where our jurisdiction applies. We give yep. a permit for that. So I do want to at this point I want to screen share. Um, and I want to screen share. Can everyone see this? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna open up the plot plan. Can everyone see this clearly? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, let me make, I was trying to make that a little bigger, but I think I've distorted things. Okay, so on page 14 of the zoning bylaws, you can see you are in AR1, correct? So I we are the 20-1. We're looking at right, at, but your uh, your zone is agricultural residential one, right? Um I'm not going to be the best person to answer that without going back through and looking exactly at um at those, I'm I'm really familiar with um, parts of the zoning bylaws, um, okay. but I'm not so familiar that I'm able to answer that. Well, let's let's current. proceed under that assumption because it's sounds it, good. Um, and you do not have public water. I do not have public water. We are okay. on a septic, and we okay. are on a well. So your and your lot is three point oh eight acres, correct? Agreed. Okay. So your the minimum lot area required for just a single family, you have no trouble uh, meeting. But if you move on to um, the requirements for a two family, the issue is that you need 275 feet of frontage. Agreed. But you don't have that. So um, I'd like to bring up two things, if I may, at this point. Mm -hmm. um, one is I brought this exact question up to the building inspector. Uh -huh. um, and he said two things. He said, one, if there are any questions that myself or Stephen Yoshin, who's here with me, who's my builder, um, are not able to answer, that the zoning board should be speaking directly to him about those questions and he said two because we are building vertically on um and we're hardly increasing the footprint of space of the building and where the garage was housed and is housed remains um that the frontage should not be an issue um, I, I'm not, that is a surprise. Um, yep. and, um, yeah, I, I Bob or Kristen, if you, how that sounds to you. Would so, someone, would someone for the minutes also please repeat this, uh, slowly enough so I can write it down. Yeah, so. I can, I can repeat it if you'd like. Okay. I'm just going to flip a page. Yep. Here. And then I'll, and then I actually do have a second point to this point that I'm that I'm describing. So 
The first point is that when I spoke to the building inspector, he, I brought up to him that we don't have the frontage that um, is required for a two family home. And he said, because we are building vertically and we are hardly increasing the footprint of the buildings that are already on the property, being both the home and the garage, and the garage remains, that the um, lack of frontage stated in the bylaws should not be an issue. This is a phone conversation. It is for all intensive purposes of what we're speaking of right now, hearsay. But this is, I, I was really clear in my question and I heard his answer clearly. And he then stated that if the ZBA has any questions about what we're doing, that they should go to him directly. Um, that he said that this shouldn't be an issue with well, it. I'm Oh, okay. Um, I do know that Roger had intended to reach out to the building inspector. He asked, he asked, he, he told me that he was going to do that a couple of days ago, which is why I'm a little surprised he's not here. But again, I have never heard of that being a waiver. Yeah, I, that, that would be a first. And that yep. would certainly at the very least be something that we would I I would like to think that we would consult town council on, but I'd love to hear your thoughts, Bob or Kristen, if you have any on this argument. Well, first of all, our bylaws don't speak to verticality. They do not. They, sim they simply say that a lot to have a two family needs to have, um, in this case, 275 feet of frontage. And um, second of all, it, I believe it's incumbent upon the applicant to provide us all the information necessary, and it is not incumbent upon us to contact the building inspector to ask the questions um, that we have. Um, that's just my opinion. So I'm really not sure. I've never, ever heard of, of that. And my question is, well, then why did he deny the permit? That's if he's so point. certain that um a uh, verticality of building and not increasing the footprint um why didn't he just give you the permit i don't understand he sent you to us and we need to interpret um this case vis-a-vis -vis, um our section 171-20 on page 40 um which doesn't say anything about the building inspector thinking it's going to be okay that's my opinion no, and, and that is, I mean, we've been on the zoning board quite a while, Amy, and, and that is, you know, we've never had the building inspector tell us um, that there's a way around this requirement. Frontage is, is, you know, frontage and lot size are the place we begin. Yep. And all the other plans, and again, we're very grateful for the detail that you went into. Absolutely. But it, it, once I saw again the lot size mm -hmm. is is well within keeping um uh, with the bylaws can but the frontage simply is not and that brings me to another question can I actually you... can I make can I make my second point before we go sure. into further absolutely um threads and before I do make my second point I just wanted to give Kristen room to speak if there's anything since Mary you, oh, sorry Deborah you were asking No, I'm I'm in agreement. I can't see anywhere in the zoning bylaws where it says that verticality is is an issue. I mean, it says that we need seventy five extra square feet and twenty thousand, um, seventy five extra square feet of frontage and twenty thousand extra square feet on the minimum lot size. But I, I'm confused as everybody else is why the building inspector. And who did you act? What building inspector was it, Jim? Uh, Je Jeffrey. Um, sorry, sorry, I didn't write his name down before we Jeff went. Jeff Gujan. Jeff, Gujan. Yeah. Can 
can I bring in the second point that I have that might might help us all um, take this in a different direction that might be helpful? You certainly can. And, and then I have another question, but absolutely, please go ahead. Okay. So if I can bring everybody's attention to um, the bylaw 171-12, I'm not sure what page it is on. 171-12. Non-conforming uses. Non-conforming yeah. uses, yep. So um, as we stated from the beginning last year and as we restated in, in bringing this up to you all again, um, the home that we're in has always had, or for as long as we've ever known it, has always had two kitchens and has always had two, two um, separate spaces of residence. We are um, redesigning the home that has pre-existing non-conforming use. So the home, um, if you if you look it up, uh, is listed as a single family home, but happens to have two kitchens, which seems to be the point that Jeff points to in his letter in January. Um, it's we're just redesigning one of the kitchens to instead of being in the basement to being um, in the space that we are creating. And so in looking at the 171-12A, um, the section A, it says a non-conforming agricultural use or structural or single family or two family dwelling may be altered, extended, Um, reconstructed. I can see that or, or structurally changed, provided that the non-conforming nature of the structure is not increased. So you're looking at A. Okay. So I have in my notes from going back to the meeting minutes from when you came before us that the house was built in 1993. Yeah, it's I think it's actually 1991, but close enough. Okay, well, that's that's what was in our meeting notes and yep. that your mother had purchased it in 2017. Uh, yes, Um, it might be 2018, but again, close enough. Okay. So my other question was, and when it was purchased, it was advertised as having an apartment in yes. the primary structure. Yes. So are you saying that that kitchen will be removed and that you won't be having three separate living units? You're Agreed. Looking, and, and that the kitchen is out of there. That, that was the plan from the very start. For is me, it out of there now? It is not out of there now because we don't have the other space built yet. It is part of the construction to have it be removed. Well, I'm just thinking about the non-conforming use provision on number A. What do people think, Bob and Kristen, about that? Let me just make sure that this isn't Roger calling. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Hello? I'm fine. Where I'm actually in the meeting. You can't join. Oh, OK. Um, hang on. Um, why are you having difficulty? Okay, you're not in. Okay. All right, hang on. Now you're here. Yes, we we are in the midst of things. Okay, Roger is joining us. You you should be able to come in right now. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.
let me go back to the When he gets in, um, we will. I'll bring him up to speed. Okay. Welcome, Roger. Thank you. Hi, Roger. Okay. Thank so, you. Roger, just to just to sum up, we are we have opened the hearing, and the the issue that we're looking at right now is the fact that the lot does not have sufficient frontage for a two family. Um. Amy, our petitioner, has spoken to the fact that the building inspector said to her that it shouldn't be a problem because the building is essentially they're building vertically. We have some issues with that, but Amy has asked us to consider this under 171-12, page 18, the non-conforming use, because the the home has always had two separate living units, but in the main house. So the kitchen is going to be taken out of the main house and a kitchen is being put into the um, addition so that it might be coming under that provision. Now, whether or not that addresses the deficient frontage requirement, we had just started to think about just started to think about. My question is, uh, so it, it can be in a, it, can it be in a, an additional, you know, the ADU or is it, it, is it because it's too big, it's not covered under that? Why is it not considered, an, you know, just like the, the kitchen that was there in the bedroom and all that? So that's- Where Amy that is right now. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, but yeah, I'm I'm at work so that my Wi-Fi works because unfortunately I'm in a pocket at 27 Masterson and I would be wow. kicked off of Zoom a lot <laughs> during this meeting. So I'm somewhere where I can be with you all. Um, so again, our our confusion and our conversations that we've had with the building inspector, I I don't. That's where that's where I I don't have answers for you as to why it's specifically this. I I have brought up to him in our conversations, and it it might have been that he didn't understand from the beginning that we had this um, second kitchen in the basement um, because it wasn't even though it was part of our building plans it wasn't part of like what we were quote unquote building so um it might have been something that he looked over but when i had conversations with him this past winter you know in january february um i did describe to him that there is this entire second kitchen that won't be there anymore that we're that we're moving it. And so it's just a redesign. And again, he felt strongly about me coming in front of you all. Um, he also, I mean, he's also mentioned, I think more than anything else that um, I guess most of the towns surrounding us, two family homes don't need a, a special permit that they're they're pretty allowable and and are done. Yeah. I don't think that makes a difference. It, it doesn't. <laughs> it really doesn't because our bylaw yeah. does. Require. Yeah, exactly. So, so um so point. <laughs> and, and again, like all of the things that I'm relating are the things that I'm that were my takeaways from conversations that I had with him over the phone. Um I'm just relaying information as best I can. And yeah. That's well. I'm. I. I have to confess. I'm still struggling a bit with the frontage issue with a a two family. Although I'm, I'm looking at a non-conforming agricultural use or structure or a single or two family dwelling may be altered, extended, reconstructed, or structurally changed provided that the non-conforming nature of the structure is not increased. Uh, 
Right. So we're not we're not increasing, we're not in, we're not making it a three kitchen <laughs> place, and we're not making more bedrooms. It's going to be the same amount of bedrooms. Like nothing is increasing. Well, but what was in the garage before you started your addition? The garage. So you are adding a bedroom. No, because sorry, we're not adding a bedroom because there are only three bedrooms in the home. So two bedrooms in the house and one in the ADU, one in the little apartment. Yes. Thank you. And so you added one bedroom above the garage. Yes. So what's going to be where there was a garage? Uh, both a garage and a living space that has, I mean, the, um, if we go back to a shared screen, I can show you the, sure, you know, um, it is, you know, it is a, a living space that we have added bathrooms. We have added, um, you know, which, studios. which, sure. So, um, so if you look at, um, I mean, we can look at any of these. I'm just trying to find one that would be the easiest. So if we look at um, hmm. garage and if we look at the garage and main floor, because I don't see one at least on here that says all, which is a little odd, but garage and main floor doesn't quite look like this now, but yes. So so this, you can see the, the kitchen very clearly. And again, the, these are the same you know, design that we showed and there's a bathroom and, you know, dining room space. And then there are stairs that lead up to, if you go to the, um, so if you back out of here and then we go to the second floor, which is down, yep, a couple, it's like about the middle. Yep. And then the next one down. Great. Yep. So this is, um, it has one bedroom. It has one bath. Um, the cent center room no longer has a wall to it, but that doesn't really matter. Um, and it has like a library and a, um, and a living space, like a living room space. Okay, but that's considered... So this addition, then, this second... Two considerable family. amount of space, yes. Yes, and so it's considerably bigger than the small little apartment. Absolutely. Absolutely. Can I ask a question? Please. Under the section of the bylaw that deals with non-conforming uses and structures, there's got to be a starting point. Why was your, or is your property considered non-conforming in the first place? Because it's listed... So if you if you look up the address, it's listed as a single family home. And yet, at least from the building inspector's point of view, what he particularly qualifies in the letter that he sent dated January of this year is that he was concerned with the kitchen um, uh, that is structurally framed out in the new space. Um, and because we have two kitchens now in what is technically on the books called a single family home, that seemingly is the non-conforming use of space. A, a single family home typically wouldn't have two kitchens, only a, a two family home would. Again, well, hold on. So oh, have we seen that letter, Deborah? I will go, let me, let me share again. And the other question that raises for me is that the other, um, oh, sorry, folks. Let me just, oh, man. okay. Um, let me go to screen share. Um, okay, uh, the letter, is this the January 30th letter? Yes. Yep. That one. Okay. It's the other thing is that I'm not sure that having an accessory apartment makes a single family home non-conforming. I'm not sure. 
Um, so can people see this clearly? Whoop, that's as much as I, I okay. Yep. So you have to go back for another building permit. Um, yes, they'll be requiring us another building permit for the two family once you've received the special permit and recorded it. Why is it now um, a two family, even though it was previously uh, a one family with a in-law? I think that that goes, if you look back at our meeting minutes, um, the accessory apartment has a square foot limit that is quite oh, small. Okay. Right. So now we've got, you know, essentially it, it, the, the, the addition is almost as big as the main, is the original house, correct? It's, it's smaller than the main house, but yes, it is more similar in size. Okay. Um, the other issue, Roger, and this is just sort of um, for your thoughts, is that um, is that Amy's mother died in January and is still on our legal application. So I don't know. I know that Amy says that there's quite a bit in the estate to deal with. There's an LLC. I, I don't know if we need to make an amendment about that. But um, maybe we should return to the issue at hand, which was Roger's question. Right, the nonconformity. So a nonconformity in our zoning parlance is a condition of the lot or structure that existed in a at a point in time and then through the passage of time and most likely the passage of a new zoning bylaw, <clears throat> became non-conforming under the new bylaw. And so what I hear you talking about, ma'am, is internal events to the home based on st structural additions that may or may not have been legal, but those don't really rise to the level of the, the non-conformity that the statute is designed to help people with. It's designed to help people in those situations that, okay, there's only by law change, but you had this place in existence and now should you be allowed to do something to that existing structure? And so that's where that language comes from and is it, it's interpreted in that context. And so I think it's like trying to put a square peg into a round hole the, the, the way you're talking about. It. I mean, I'm thinking it's, it's hard to get my head around this property. I drove by it, and I think maybe a site view would be good for the board to, to understand. We'd be happy. Exactly what is happening there, because um, it's just a little confusing hearing it orally, to to my mind. Yeah, I think I think that would be a good idea, um, Bob and Kristen. Do you think so as well? Um. <laughs> Just in case Bob is not available to vote, <laughs> Kristen, I think it would be a good idea, um, given his busy schedule. Um, so I'm, I'm more than a willing to, you know, to go and look. But um, what is what? Well, I mean, like, I, I still don't understand if it's, if it's not going to be a two family. I mean, the structure's already there, right? We're just arguing about what's it going to be. Correct. No, the building inspector is refusing to give an occupancy permit. The, the building inspector has determined that it is a two family. It's two structures, two sizable structures with that are independent units. And so it's it's and he has refused the occupancy permit and sent Amy to us for a special permit for a two family. Okay. And so that, and we have a problem in that there is not sufficient frontage for a two family. And especially with, with 
frankly, with a with a unit with a kitchen in it, it then becomes a multifamily, which requires even more frontage. And so there's, you know, it's it is a confusing project at this point. And didn't we just have a hearing last month and the petitioner yeah. there was faced with a lack of frontage for a proposed two family? Yeah. And in his case, too, a lack of lot size, as I mm -hmm. recall. Yes. Um, I mean, it's it there is, you know, there's there is one um there is a, a, a another option which is not yet approved at town meeting. And even if it's approved at town meeting, it's not yet approved by the attorney general. But if one of your units was to be made affordable by the state formula, this is a planning board uh, proposal to amend the zoning bylaws, but that would not be something, that would have to be rented from at affordable rates. And then those conditions, frontage and lot size, well, you're not, you don't need to worry about lot size, can be waived. But it, it's not something you can do for yourself. I mean, this has to, to add to the stock of affordable housing in the state. So that is, um, it's just something to think about. Because um, if we're going to do a site view, then we're not going to be making a decision tonight on, on this. Well, I'll, let me put the uh, proposal forward. I would be willing to go by on Saturday and and reconvene even next Thursday, the the normal first Thursday of the month. I, so um, I don't want to delay this any longer than it needs to be delayed for a variety of reasons. Um, I am holding my mother's celebration of life on May the 4th. Okay. I would appreciate us not doing anything until after that happens, um, given just what I need to do in preparation for that. Sure. Um, I also just want to state that from the very beginning, we have given the plans and our ideas and what we were going to do in plain transparency to everyone who has asked for it. We were issued a building permit. There was no reason as lay people for us to think that we couldn't build when we were given and paid for a building permit. And I would really appreciate doing whatever we possibly could to not have all of the beautiful energy and materials and everything that has gone into this structure be something that is held up by bureaucracy in terms of whatever the outcome may be. So I just I just want to state that into blessings and prayer for this to be something that can house people at a time when we all know that we're in the middle of a housing crisis, not just in our area, but in our country. Amy, we certainly understand that you have, certainly in this hearing, you have given us a great deal of information. And I absolutely understand your frustration, especially at a time of great loss. Um, I, would, I would respectfully remind you that when you came before us a year ago, we had asked you to come back with more information and we held the hearing and you didn't come. And then you, I phoned you and you said you had got your building permit. So at that point, it was out of our hands completely. And you've come back before us now because the building inspector has insisted on it. And you know, you're asking for a special permit for something that has a very, the table, uh, the dimensional table is very, very clear as to what the lot size is and what the frontage size is. And so I'm, I understand your frustration, but I also feel as though we have tried very hard to meet you where you are with this application. 
I appreciate that. And I do respect and appreciate all of the time and energies that everyone on this call and outside of this call have done. I can't, I can't imagine the, the entire, not ever having done any of this before, um, not knowing how these things proceed. Had we known that coming back and still doing this part of things while having a building permit issued to us would have been a help and a support and would have made things go more smoothly or would have told us that we have to stop building, you know, even when we had just begun, we would have done that in a heartbeat. I just want to want to say that out loud. I do remember you saying, you know, maybe you should apply apply for this or for that. When once we had the building permit in hand, it seemed well, you like didn't you didn't need to be see us again once you had a building permit. But it okay. sounds like the building permit was issued for an addition. And once you put a kitchen in there, it became an independent unit, an independent housing unit. The the kitchen was clearly in the plans. That that's then then the, the building inspector. Then that's on the building inspector. It really was. Um, but when would you like us? We certainly will respect sure. your dates. Yep. Um, when would you? I know you said you don't want to do anything until after the fourth. Yep. So. Um, uh, I, it, are, are the weekends the best time for everyone? Is that when we would need to do this? The site view? Yes. Um, what, what's, what's works for you, Roger and Bob and Kristen? The weekends are when we traditionally do it. Okay. okay. So, um, on the first weekend day that I have available is Sunday, May 12th. I'm on a work trip on the 11th, but I'm back home on the 12th. Is the 12th work for people? Not, not for, me. for me. Yes. Is there a particular time, Amy, that you'd like us to arrive? I'm I'm totally open to whatever time you want to come on the 12th, but I, I thought that I heard that, Kristen, you said that the 12th doesn't work for you. It does not. I'm out Do of we, town. You're yep. out of town. Do we want to... The 18th or the 19th are both available. The 19th, I would just request that we do it after 10 a.m., but either the 18th or the 19th. Um, and the 18th, I know the reason I know Bob's out of town is because we have a library trustees event on that day, and you said you couldn't make it, but I am going to make it on the 18th to that. So the 19th, perhaps? Okay. Okay. All right, so the site view. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Amy, what, after what time of day? Just after 10 a.m. Okay. So 10, 1030 or whatever. How, how early would people like to meet there or how, what time? I, I'm, I'm quite open, so. I'm open. Me too. Say 11. 11. Is that Mother's Day? That Mother's day? No, because now we're on the 19th, Roger. Okay. Okay, so 11 o'clock on the 19th. That's okay with me, yeah. Okay, so so at this point then, we're gonna continue this hearing. Um, and so can I have a motion to uh, continue the hearing? <laughs> so moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. so it's unanimous. Um, okay, so we will see you on the 19th. Um, in the interim, so you know that the two things, if, you know, given that you told us that the building inspector said that he felt that because, you know, all the reasons you gave, the verticality issue, if you want to get him to put, put that in writing, that we can consider it for the next time we meet after the site view, um, that might be helpful. If you have um, if you want to consult an attorney to make your non-conforming argument, that might be useful. Um, what Bob said earlier, that it is um, incumbent upon the petitioner to make the argument, produce the evidence, that is something I concur with. 
Um, but I mean, I think we have, we see what you're arguing, but you've also heard um, Roger Lipton's counter to that. So if you feel as though you wanna make that argument more strongly, you should feel free to do so. Um, does it make sense for us to invite the building inspector to do the walkthrough with us? So that he won't, he won't do, no, he won't do that. Okay. Okay, so um, is there anything else you want to ask us, Amy? Well, we should pick the next actual meeting date. Yeah, we should. Now we're very, on the 19th, I mean, the one thing that we have to, we can't really sort of, I mean, we have a set time to meet in June, but we can't really pick a meeting date until we know if it's available. Is that right, Mary? Yes, I need to let them know that we're planning to meet on this date. Is the Zoom uh, apparatus available? Can we have a, you know, a code, an access code for it? I mean, we could we could theoretically choose the twenty third, which is the Thursday. I mean, it doesn't have to be the twenty third, but I mean, does does anyone have any kind of conflicts that week, the week of the twentieth? Yes. Yes. How yes. how many? Like any days that work for you, Bob? Uh not really this that's uh entering into championship season and it's a two-day meet so 23rd is out 25th is out so what about the 23rd 20th oh okay 23rd is out um should we would the 20th 21st 22nd um i i can certainly try any one in particular you think would be better than others? No, just 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 pick one of them, and I, I'm just. I'm How about the twenty first? <laughs> sure. Twenty first. Okay. Okay. ZBA meeting, May twenty one. Subject to Mary's checking with the town. Yes. Yes. I'll find. I'll be able to find out next week. They're closed tomorrow, but. Okay. <laughs> I apologize for being so uh, difficult in terms of my schedule at the end of May and early June is um is just impossible. I so understand. I apologize for being a stick in the mud. No, no, no. And you had made that clear last time. That's why you are crucial, Kristen. <laughs> um, so I don't think we have anything else that we need from you, Amy. We have some um um administrative work to do with our minutes and such. I'd, I'd like to ask um, just one more question, although it might be early to ask it. Um, if if we aren't able to uh, get a two-family um, per permit, is there another pathway towards this building being able to remain? <laughs> good question it, it is a good question i don't know the answer to i mean there is the possibility of the community housing bylaw the planning board does have a copy of that that is you know as i said it has not been voted on at town meeting and it hasn't been approved by the attorney general but that would mean you would need to rent one of those buildings at a for at an affordable rate um what the state considers an affordable rate um not necessarily you know market rate and um and that's a risk that it would not pass at town meeting or that the attorney general wouldn't um approve it but that's the only thing i can think of right now that without you know committing so i'm right now i'm at a real risk of this being in your very beautiful, capable hands, um, and same with the building inspector, but that you'll tell me to tear down this building. So we don't issue tear down orders. We either approve or deny the petition. <clears throat> so if that is any reassurance. If I were you, I'd hire a lawyer. 
I think I think you need some legal help. I would agree. Thank you all very much. You're welcome, Amy, and we will see you on the 19th. Okay. okay. So we have some minutes to approve and we also need, I sent to everybody today a really small document. Um, is this something we need to keep recording, folks? I, if we're gonna vote on something, yes. There's one thing we need to vote. Yes, thank you, Bob. Um, okay, so I'm just going to get this out of the way first, and that is, um, oh, sorry, I keep doing this. Um, sharing, I forget. Okay, we do have... Can I take a five-minute break? I'm sorry. Uh, of I'm course. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, that's okay. We'll be, we'll be waiting. I'll just share this until you come back. Actually, Bob and Kristen, you can read this, because Roger and I have read it. Um, you we, sent it. You sent it today. I did. I sent it like yes. this afternoon. I, re I read it. I read it. Okay, great. Are um, we talking about the uh, acceptance of regulations that you yes. sent? Yeah, I read that too. Okay, great. So we just, when Roger gets back, we just need to vote to accept it, and um, and that part it will be will be done. Are we going to take a five minute break? Yes. Okay. Okay, we will see you in five minutes. Okay. Mary, did you see my... Did you get something today? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. I was going to say that as a matter of fact, do you still need to share that? Or you can come out of it. I can show you what arrived. Okay. <laughs> oh, beautiful oh, bouquet. <laughs> well, I don't know where it, where where the focus is. They're beautiful little tiny miniature pink tulips. Oh, as a uh, thank you present, <laughs> I, I was totally shocked and uh, much appreciative. And a lot of them are just starting to open, so they'll be around for a while. Oh, but, good. Uh, they good. came in beautifully. I all I just I always worry that that you know that you know that something won't get there. So I'm just glad. And you know, while I've got you to myself, you know, I noticed when I was doing the minutes that I did. Um, that uh, we say, I say at the end, you know, these documents that are stored in the ZBA files, exactly who stores them there? Does Well, that's, I used to. <laughs> used to, okay. Well, you know, a lot of the stuff, I don't have printed copies of all the stuff that gets posted on the calendar, especially the stuff that's too big. Um, yeah. I'm assuming that the paper copies are are going to town hall to the town clerk as they're supposed to, but okay. Um, you know, I that's it. no. This these are just good questions for me to ask, right? Uh, uh, Amy or Jessica. So documents that are um, okay. So the documents that are put on the agendas. I mean, as long as there's a digital copy of them. Um, I mean, the, the stuff that we use should pretty much mostly be there, I would think. But. Yeah. Okay. Agendas and um, so the documents. Um, okay. So um, they should be saved somewhere. Um, and the other thing is that should I should I take over checking the ZBA mailbox? And if so, do you want to email me the password and the username? Oh, oh it's. I think it, they would just reassign it to you. Um, oh, they, okay. When they established them, um, it was decided that I would do it. But no, and that's really, ideal. That's it, it, like that's... It, it. It comes in and it gets bounced to me, and it can get bounced to someone else instead of me. That I mean, okay. that's it. It it comes right in. It it comes to me at my personal email. I see addressed to 
zba.org, but okay. uh, Brian arranged for it to go to my personal email box. Okay. Okay. Well, as we get closer to your departure, um, I'll, I'll check in with you and them on that. Um, okay. All right. Um, can someone tell me why the building inspector keeps mentioning to people that we're the quote unquote only town that dot, oh, dot, dot. No. And so they come to us saying, well, it should be no problem because no other town has a problem with it. It has right. nothing to do with our zoning bylaws. I know, I know. And all we can do is tell people that, you know, it, but um, I, I honestly, I, I, and I, I, I must say, I've never heard of the building inspector sort of overriding our bylaws in an explanation. Like, well, as long as you're building straight up, you know, um, that was a first. So. Yeah. So we're just waiting for Kristen. I realize that I have to get that the um bear with me a minute. I want to get them. Excuse me a moment. I'm here. Oh hi Kristen. Okay, so we've got and my video is no, off, but I'm here. No problem. Um I'm gonna share the screen and okay, so we need to vote that we are just fine with these acceptance of regulations. I am. I am. Uh, I moved that we ac accept the um, new regula the new regulations that change language in our um, zoning bylaws, I guess. Second. All in favor. I'm in favor. All right. Okay. Right, that one's done. Um, okay, oh, let me get out of this thing. I'm gonna stop the share and share again. So then we have, these are the easy ones. This is the um, draft Oh, I guess we need, I want to, oh, there you are, Mary. This is the, so Mary, we just voted to approve. Yes, I was here for that. Right, okay. So this is the June 1st meeting. This is the one where we um, adjourned because um, Amy did not uh, attend the hearing. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything in, in, in these minutes that needed to be changed. Did anyone else? No. Okay, so... Can we vote on these in a block or do we have to make a motion for each one? Let's do it in a block. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop the share on this one. So Mary, June 1 is approved with okay. no changes. Okay. Let me share again. And which one? Approval. Okay. Ah, June 1 is approved. Okay. Okay, and then this is May 22nd. Let me make this a little bigger. And so we do have questions there. I Does anybody remember who Fred's relative was? Who came Bill, yeah, it is, it is Bill. It is Bill, okay. So, so that one is okay, Mary. Okay, so Bill attended and Bill said what I said he said. <laughs> um, yes. Somewhere later on. Yeah, he, yeah. I was pretty sure that was who, who was yeah. I was dealing with. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, that's okay. I thought, I'm really going back. I thought that Keith Bardwell said trim the trees, but am I wrong? I didn't know if maybe there was a mix. I do remember trimming being mentioned maybe there was no tree that needed to come down i just couldn't remember um, i can certainly just change it to trimming and leave it at that i think that would be fine i think that would be fine yeah. um and when i was a little confused here though um keith bardwell wanted trees trimmed removed oh and then i read through the relevant criteria my notes say say page 73 okay um 
I just went to look up page 73 and see what was on there. And it's a different topic now. So I'm thinking that back in May, page 73 was correct. But after the next round of town hall meeting and all of that, the bylaws page uh, arrangement changed a bit and they're now somewhere else. And I well just couldn't look it up. Okay, then this is, we're all looking at the bylaws that, I mean, the copy that I have. That's amateur radio facilities. On that's page what one. I remember. Yeah. Well, but what, yeah. Date, what date do you all have on your bylaw? Ooh. I went by what's posted on the website. On the, on the website now. Okay, because um, my the one I've got my hard copy is says uh, approved by the attorney general October 7, twenty twenty two. Same with me. Same with me. Okay. All right. So you know what, Mary? I'm not sure that we need anything other than other than read through the relevant criteria. Full stop. Works for me. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um. And then, so here it is. Bill Orlowski said the rooms on the plan are not drawn to scale. That's, yeah. I remember him saying that. Yeah, yeah and he, he said all the rest of that. The, he listed his objections, and I I, I remember hearing all of that. Um, okay. And that you replied that we, we wouldn't be able to tell anything more if we went and visited the outside anyway. So, and... Okay. Bill Albert said you wouldn't be able to tell anything more from the inside. It's just empty space. So. That's right. I do remember that. Um, okay. Oh, so this one is approved with those corrections. And oh. then we have one. I'm going to stop the share on this. We have one more and I need to go and actually get it because it's the one I sent to everybody the minutes yeah. that I wrote. So I just need to get into my... Um, file and grab it. Um, right there. Let me just go back for that. And then, okay, so these are the ones that I wrote and I know that they are, I honestly don't, I, I didn't write down the names of anybody else who was at that meeting. I know that there was the guy, the man who owns the, um, the marijuana Oh yeah. Farm right. next to um the petitioner's proposal. I've forgotten his name. What you know, I I wonder if we can just say other other Okay, I'm going back. I have some people's names listed. I I forgot to even look um since you were right in the minutes. Um I listed Fran Fortino, oh, Brent right. Jacobs of the planning board. Chris I have Green, him. Uh, Chris Green, Judy. Um, Mark. Have her. Uh, then the other two just said Kate's phone and phone number. <laughs> okay. Uh, and two uh, others not fully identified. That works for me. Thank you. Okay. Um, now the only other thing that I do not, I mean, did anybody see any changes they wanted to make in the actual text? No. Nope. Okay. The only other thing I have, um, is that I don't have a time for when we move to adjourn. Let me see what I have, if anything. Uh, hmm. And if not, we didn't go all that long. I I mm -hmm. could I could say I think by eight o'clock. Oh, I think so for sure. Yeah. Okay. At or around eight o'clock. <laughs> At or around eight p.m. Okay. 
And I can save these and send them to you, Mary. Okay. At around 8 p.m. Okay. So okay. Then I'll, I, I, once I get them, I can include them and send them off to get posted. That'd be great. And so I'm just going to save this. And so I did append this email because he, I had to phone him. Um, and all right. So let me just save this. Okay, I believe that that is all our approvals. So at this point, I'm going to stop the, I'm going to stop the recording just so we can have a, um, a personal moment. So.